thanks for coming out, everybody. Today, I'm going to talk about a new way of doing business. A way in which a business incorporates giving and charity into its business model. So that as the business thrives, a major social issue is addressed as well. And we've seen a lot of businesses do this in the last few years. Most notably, Tom's Shoes. They've been able to give over a million pairs of shoes away to children around the world. And they've done it by utilizing a for-profit business model. And today I'm going to talk about how this way of doing business is actually more effective than a traditional charity in solving some of the world's biggest problems. So where do I get this crazy idea? When I was in high school, I took a class on environmental science. And one of the major tenets of environmental science is this concept of the tragedy of the commons. The tragedy of the commons occurs when you have a public area of land. So let's say a park, or a stream, or a beach. And what environmentalists will tell you is that these areas will get degraded more than any other area. And it's easy to see why. When you're walking through a park and you see litter on the ground, you treat it like it's someone else's problem. If it was in your front yard, you'd, yard, you'd go outside and you'd pick it up. And it's the same thing with pollution and global warming and a lot of these other environmental problems. But the tragedy of the commons isn't limited to the environment. It applies to all of the major social issues that we face today. Whose problem is it to address global and domestic poverty? Whose problem is it to address the world's water crisis? We treat these problems like they're no ones, but in fact, we know that they belong to us all. And there's one way that we can solve this. We have to take these problems out of the public domain and we have to privatize them, and we have to build them into business. The first time I saw this business model was last semester. I was on campus, and I started to see these hats pop up everywhere. These snapback hats called sea hats. They come in a variety of colors. And for each hat sold, 25% of the revenue is donated to a particular cause. So for example, the pink hat here benefits breast cancer research. Now, 800 of these hats were sold at Boston College last semester. 800. That was enough to generate almost $4,000 in revenue for a variety of different causes. OK. But we see charity is able to, to donate this much money as well. So what's unique about this situation? Well, this $4,000 came from a bunch of broke college students people that don't have a whole lot of money. But for some reason, when presented with a product that they really liked, that they really needed, these cool snapback hats, they wanted to give back. And what C did was they took these social issues and they built it into a business, they put it into a product, and therefore they were able to motivate a bunch of broke college students to donate $4,000 to all of these causes. This way of doing business is referred to as social entrepreneurship. And to put it simply, it's the use of business to address a major social issue. So last semester, some friends and I got together and motivated by what we saw going on in campus with C, we decided to do something, to apply this business model to a cause that we were very passionate about, and that's the water crisis. If you don't know, over a billion people on the planet don't have access to clean drinking water. In fact, every 20 seconds, a child dies from a waterborne illness. And we wanted to do something about it. And there's plenty of water charities out there. But we wanted to use this for-profit business model because, like Tom's and C, we saw a lot of potential. So what we came up with was this company called Maji. Maji in Swahili <coughs> means water. And what we do is we sell these stainless steel water bottles. And I don't know if you've ever looked around in your classrooms, but Last semester, I was looking around, and over 50% of the people in the room had either a SIG, a Camelback, a Clean Canteen, a Nalgene, a Mir. Everyone had a water bottle. Yet, while these water bottles were eco-friendly and convenient, where was the water bottle that not only gave you water, but also gave other people water? And so we came up with this idea for Maji, and what we do is $5 from every bottle sold 
goes to an organization called Charity Water. Charity Water drills wells in developing nations where people don't have access to clean water. And so for each four bottles sold, we're able to give one person drinking water for the rest of their life. So our goal is not to collect donations. We're not going out and trying to get people to donate to the water crisis. We're trying to provide them with a product that they want either way, a cool water bottle. And we're, in doing so, we believe that we can empower the average consumer, the broke college student, to solve the water crisis, to change the world. So to explain why this is more effective than charity, let's look at how a charity normally operates. So behind me, I have a picture of Matt Damon. Matt Damon, as you know, <coughs> is a famous actor. He has a lot of money. And so Matt Damon went out and he started Water.org, which is one of the most popular, well-known water charities in the world. They do a lot of great things. They provide not only water projects, but they do a lot on hygiene as well. And so Matt Damon took a lot of his resources and he poured it into this charity. And he went out and they got, uh, got other donors let people donate to this cause, and after operational costs, what was left was used to address this water crisis. But the problem is the average person, that average broke college student, again, isn't confronted with this problem every day. And let's be honest, we don't have a lot of extra to give. But more importantly, we're not reminded every day to give. Now let's look at Maji's business model, and this is the same way for all of these kinds of companies, for Tom's and C. What we have in the bottom right is a Maji consumer. This is Allie Ware. Allie is a student at the University of Richmond. She's a D1 lacrosse player, a great girl. And last summer, Allie traveled to Tanzania. And while she was there living with the local Maasai people, she had kids coming up to her and tugging at her water bottle saying, Maji, Maji, Maji. And like I said earlier, Maji in, in Swahili means water. These kids didn't have access to clean water. And so when Allie returned to the States, this problem for her was very real. It was something she had seen with her own eyes. And she wanted to do something about it. But the problem is, Allie is not Matt Damon. Allie doesn't have a whole lot of money. In fact, Allie's an athlete. She can't even work a part-time job. So how is Allie supposed to fix this problem? Well, what she did was she went out and she bought five Maji bottles. She sold four to her friends. And in the end, Allie was able to give one person clean water for the rest of their lives. Now, had she gone out to her friends and asked for donations, I'm guessing it would have been a lot more difficult. But instead, Allie went out and sold them a great product, these Maji bottles. Now, let's look at the benefits as far as a company goes. When you're a for-profit company rather than a nonprofit, you're inherently more efficient because you're trying to turn a profit. And you can also take on investors. You can grow faster. And in doing so, you can find more alleywares. When you combine these two things, what you get are millions of customer philanthropists that you're mobilizing to solve this problem, and not just relying on a few one-time or a few-time donations from a few donors. Tom's is probably the best example of this business model working. Tom's since their inception, has given away over a million pairs of shoes. And we're not talking about used shoes or donated shoes. We're talking about brand new shoes. The same kinds that you see in, in the store. The same kinds that they're selling. So for every pair of shoes that Tom sells, they give a pair away. Now, what if Tom's was a charity? Think about that. What if Tom's had gone out and just said, Hey guys, I'm, I'm starting this project. I'm trying to give away shoes to these kids that don't have shoes. Will you donate? And I bet you a lot of people might have donated some shoes. A lot of people might have given some money. But would it have been sustainable? Would they have been able to give away a million pairs of shoes? They have repeat customers that come back every three months and buy another pair of tops. And in doing so, it's a sustainable business model that gives back to this cause. They've been able to do a whole lot of good. So I'll leave you with this. This is the future of business. And you're probably wondering, okay, that's great. What can I do about it? A few years ago, some companies started offering eco-friendly products. Just a few. But consumers went out, and when 
offered the choice between that eco-friendly product and the one that wasn't, they started to choose that eco-friendly product. And what happened? All of a sudden, every company started adopting these environmentally friendly ways of doing business. You saw your laundry detergent become more efficient. You saw your plastic water bottles become thinner and more eco-friendly. And pretty soon, almost every company out there had some kind of green initiative. We saw the same thing happen with nutrition. A few restaurants started offering healthier alternatives. And what happened? Customers started demanding those healthier alternatives. Even McDonald's had to revamp their menu. Chili's completely wiped their entire menu, started over from scratch. They had to do this because they were losing so many customers to the chains that were going healthier. These were not top-down changes. They were bottom-up. They were the customers demanding these kinds of products. Eco-friendly products, healthier products, and today we have the opportunity to demand socially conscious products. We have the opportunity to demand that companies do build giving into the way that they do business. And in doing so, what we can do is we can take those problems that right now sit outside of our normal way of doing things. They're in the public domain. They're like that park that no one takes responsibility for. We can pull it into private enterprise and confront the average consumer give them the opportunity to give back to these problems. And in doing so, we can solve some of the world's most challenging issues, like the water crisis. Thank you.